Good morning, everybody. Orange Jay here with another War of the Visions video, and it's almost time. Cloud and Tifa are almost in global, and it's time to do our video over Tifa, where we look at her stats, her skills, like compare her to some other units. And you know what? With Tifa, she's really interesting because I think you won't be just blown away by her stat pool, but it's her skills. You're going to look at her skills and think, aha, I'm starting to understand what all the hype is for this unit. But we're going to look at all of that and talk about how you can make her a good unit, what she does, all of those things right now. All right, first up, like all of my War of the Visions videos, this one is sponsored by Amazon Coins. So if you need some Vizior for the Final Fantasy VII collaboration, please consider using my Amazon Coin affiliate link. It's down in the description. Fantastic way to support the channel, and thank you to everybody who's been doing that. Now, let's talk about Tifa. And I think where I want to start here is comparing her 99, 115, and 120 stats. So you see those on the screen, and let's go through them a little bit, because I don't think that her stat pool by itself is, like, mind-blowingly extraordinary. You can see, um, well, let's just go through it. Okay, so at level 99, she's at 2,700 HP, 363 attack, 68 agility, and then you can kind of see the rest. Note that she is a move 3, jump 2 character, so that jump 2 will be pretty useful, and that stays consistent it throughout her levels. As she moves to 115, her HP takes a nice jump up to 3283, and her attack jumps by over 100 to 464. So that's a really big leap. Her agility stays at 68, but she is picking up more dexterity and luck. Now she's an evasion unit, so picking up as much luck and agility as she can will be very important for her. Let's jump up to 120 now. HP takes about another 200 point jump to 3495, and that's a really nice uh, pool of HP for an evasion unit for a DPS slash bruiser. Her attack goes up by almost another 30 to 491. Her agility stays flat, and she gains another 10 luck. So, I'm sorry, she gains another 10 dexterity and another 40 almost luck. That 40 almost luck is an important jump, again, for an evasion unit that is Tifa. I'm not blown away, even at 120, by her attack stat. Like, I just feel like it's a little bit low. And I'm not going to lie, the first time I started looking at Tifa, uh, I didn't write her off, but I was just underwhelmed by 491 attack. And when we compare her to other units in a minute, you'll see what I mean. Anyway, uh, let's look at her resistances and stuff. She is very strong against Earth because she's a wind unit, so that makes sense. And she's weak to ice. So, you know, you might get some run out of your ice units in Arena and Guild Wars coming soon because Tifa being a free unit, you know she's going to be running around out there. Get your ice units ready. She is 10% strong to slashing. She's weak to piercing by 10. She's neutral to strike, strong against missile, and neutral to magic. So I actually like those resistance stats. None of them are particularly particularly good or particularly bad, but it's big deal that none of them are particularly bad. Um, she has 15 wind attack because of her, you know, passive ability. She's a newer unit. She's strong against charm, stop, and don't move. Those are kind of not super important. So, okay. I think now you can see what I was talking about. If you look at Tifa's stats and you compare them to somebody like Cloud that we've done a ton of videos over, Cloud's attack stat could get to like these crazy high numbers. Tifa's down there under 500. And you might be thinking to yourself, I get it. I see why she's a free, uh, why she's a giveaway unit. She's just not going to be as good as Cloud. And while it's true she might not be as good as Cloud, I think just looking at her stats and thinking that tells much of a story can be misleading. So I want to dig a little deeper into her story here. And we're going to start by comparing her to 2B, somebody who a lot of people are going to be running her next to. Now, if you look at their base stats at 120, you can see they're very, very comparable. Tifa has more HP, but slightly less attack. 2B has less agility, but more luck. I think they'll both be um, equally good at evading, given an equal amount of like opportunity to buff and gear, whereas 2B will hit a little bit harder. But I don't think that tells the really accurate story, because you need to go to at least support a abilities to see what kind of stats your units are going to be walking into a fight with. So what I did, I equipped 2B and Tifa with what I think are going to be commonly equipped support abilities, and I redid these numbers. So let's put that on the screen, and here you'll see where 2B's damage potential might look a lot higher than Tifa's. 2B, with just her support abilities equipped, can hit 734 attack. Notice Tifa is still stuck at 491. 
Um, Tifa's HP is still a lot higher than 2B's, but check out that agility. Tifa is now bringing 75 agility into this fight before gear, before vision cards and espers, where 2B is stuck at 66. Uh, Tifa's luck shoots up to 284 and actually gets ahead of 2B's. So even though Tifa is not bringing um, a bunch of attack steroids in her, um, in her support abilities, she is buffing her other really important evasion skills. And that's going to be really important for her. And I think it begins to tell a little bit more of a story of exactly what this girl is going to be able to do. But to tell the full story, we're going to have to look at the skills. So let's go there next. Now, just like last time, before we look at the skills, let's look at the TMR and see if maybe that if you're thinking about not even building her at all, if she's worth taking to a level 99 just for this. It's an accessory called Tifa's Elbow Pad. 277 HP, 37 attack, 9 defense, and 12 critical hit rate. I actually think that stat line on an accessory is very, very good for a physical damage dealer like Slash Bruiser who wants to crit a little bit. Now, the effect on it, the TMR skill... Um, you see what it's called on here. We'll see what it's actually called when it drops in global, but it's a nice little AOE buff. You can see it's a, it's got a big AOE on it for a TMR and it's a 40% attack buff for three turns and a 30 strike attack buff for wind allies. Again, this leads into her ability to group with somebody like 2B, who's a wind unit, who's bringing strike damage. And this is an opportunity for Tifa to give herself an attack steroid. I do want to point out, however, though, there's no evasion stats on this TMR. You're not getting any agility. You're not getting any luck. So I don't know if you will necessarily want to run this on her, but maybe you could run it on somebody else with her. Because as you can see here, it's equipable by like everybody in the game, basically. So that's something to take into consideration. Now, let's look at her skills. And we'll start with those support abilities that were already equipped in that show off between 2B and Tifa. Now, she has the two basic ninja ones, Shadow Running and Shikuji here. This one's going to give her agility and luck of 12%. You're going to run this like all the time, basically, because these are two of the core mechanics for an evasion unit. You want agility, you want luck, that's going to help you dodge. Shikuchi is going to be map dependent. Do you need the move and jump plus one? If so, then run that. Paladin's Blessing, this will turn her into a little bit more of a bruiser with 12 defense and 12% HP. And then her new her new ability from uh, her new job gives her Strike Attack plus 12 and Acquired AP up plus 40. This is the one I was running in the show off versus 2B. I think that's really cool. It's a way of boosting her damage through increasing Strike Attack and boosting her damage by increasing the amount of abil AP she's earning. That's pretty cool. I like that move, but you could mix and match any four of these. None of them are really terrible. If we go down a little bit and look at these counter moves, Counter Chakra is the new one that she's bringing to the game. It's a 20% chance to proc, 15% HP increase for herself, and it dispels all ailments except for Charm, Slow, Stop, and Doom. Pretty interesting. I think some people will run that. You don't want to get status affected, right? Disable will wreck your day, etc. Now, she has Poison Needle Return from Ninja. This is the Poison Counter Attack. Some people run that. I I've seen it occasionally. It's kind of troll. Uh, Paladin's Guard is the one that's going to turn her into a little bit more of an anti-physical bruiser with a 20% chance to block 45% of physical damage. I think the first one or the third one are probably going to be the ones you're choosing between there. Now, when we're talking about the rest of her skills and we start talking about like EX buffs and stuff, there's a lot of upgrade on here. You're going to see the word upgrade a lot of times. We're going to go through that. Now, let's talk about her basic attack. And we don't usually talk about basic attack. That's this one right here. You can see it's striking damage. It scales 100% off of attack and deals 70% damage. Now, it is upgraded by one of her main job skills, um, Mystery Release right here. Mystery Release basically is an attack steroid for Tifa that's a 40% attack buff. Defense Penetration buff plus 50. This is, again, another way of helping her increase the amount of damage she's doing. Her attack stat is low, so she needs other ways of inflicting that damage. 50 defense pin is a really dang good start. So that's really cool. And this upgrades her basic attack. What do I mean? So it goes from a 70% non-elemental attack to a 131% elemental attack. This is actually kind of cool because it turns what is her weakest move into the equivalent of um, an actual AP costing ability. For example, it turns it into the equivalent of this AP costing ability right here, Positive Fist Thrust. This is 131% damage that she can use eight times. It has the same range as a basic attack, and it scales, though, off of 120% attack. So I think something you're going to have to choose with Tifa is do you want to leave this on 
Or would you rather have her using her upgraded basic attack to generate AP? I don't know. This will hit harder because it's 120% scaling off of attack, but Tifa's not a particularly high attack unit. So maybe you could sacrifice the little bit of scaling here for AP generation from her basic attack, especially if you're running this support ability where she'll generate more AP. Something to think about right there, and it's interesting. Now, let's continue on. Uh, Burst Punch. This is an upgraded ability from Mystery Release again, even though, like, again, translations being what they are, it looks kind of weird. But this upgrades into... So, excuse me. Basically, it starts out as a physical barrier break that does 210% damage. When upgraded, it's still a, a physical barrier break, but the damage upgrades are 250%. It is a short range ability at only one range, but 28 AP is pretty cheap for an ability that's going to remove a barrier and hit for extra large damage at 250%. That's pretty nice. I like that move. Now, let's look at Rise Beat. This really helps understand why I like Burst Punch so much. Because Rise Beat, before it upgrades into Rise Beat Break, is a jumping move. Tifa will leap to the middle of this square right here and hit in four directions around her. It's 32 AP, hits for 165% damage, and it critically decreases the accuracy of the units it hits by 25. So, if you notice, she does not have um, an evasion buff in her main kit right here. Instead, with her main kit, she's bringing an accuracy debuff. So it's doing kind of the job of making her and her team more evasive through lowering the accuracy of the enemy team. That's really cool. Now, that upgrades to Rise Beat Break, which, um, well, excuse me, <laughs> it upgrades to Rise Beach Break, which does not change the numbers of the attack at all, but what it does is it changes the AoE. It now hits in a complete square around her, and that's a big deal, because there's a lot of times units will be standing like right next to each other right here, so you'd like to be able to hit all of them. This is a really nice upgrade, and I really, really like the skill. Basically, she closes the gap, and while closing the gap, nerfs the enemy's accuracy, and then beats them up from close range. Really, really nice. Then she has Overdrive. This is another 120% um, attack scaling move that is very short range. It only has a range of two, but it's reasonably priced at 23 AP, and it's a four-hit chaining ability. A four-hit striking wind chain. That's going to be big-time damage. Then, if you take her to job level 25, you will get Swipe Combination. This is a medium range move that's a two-hitting attack that scales for 200% damage. I actually don't know, like, if this move is very good at all. You might, like, let's, let's put my face back on the screen here. We'll see how effective that move is compared to something like her Overdrive and the rest of her kit when we get into the game. But personally, I think I'd rather have my Tifa jumping on people blinding them and then just walloping them from right up close instead of this medium range two hit attack she has a shorter range four hit attack that you know it, i think will do as much or more damage especially if she's already broken those barriers so something to consider maybe if you're building a bunch of the final fantasy 7 units maybe tifa's job level 120 isn't necessary for you um for getting the rest of your other units maxed out and you can revisit tifa through the barracks or something later okay let's continue Okay, now, one of the most interesting things when you're thinking about Tifa is what sub-job to run her on, because I think they're all viable for different reasons, and this will really de determine, like, what kind of Tifa you're going to bring out. So, her Monk FF7 sub-job is notable for Indomitable Stance right there. This is the Courage buff, the 200% chance to not die one time, which I think is even more valuable on evasion units than it is on regular units, because a 1 HP evasion unit can still dodge 5 or 6 more times just as well as a full HP evasion unit can. So a lot of love for this move right here and I think it's a reason a lot of people might run the monk sub job. However, the other two moves aren't particularly good. Yes, you have a short range stunning move and you have a very small AoE move right here. You might even leave those on if you run this, but the highlight of the monk sub job is the courage buff right here. Now, the ninja sub job is another interesting one because this is the one that brings access to an evasion buff for herself. However, it's a 60% evasion buff, which is a lot, but it's only for one turn. So I actually think I'd rather have courage than the 60% one turn evasion buff 
from the ninja subjob. Now, yes, it also brings access to hide, which is a anti-hate buff. It brings chance to the guarantee. It brings access to the guaranteed hit accuracy buff and the non-attack type elemental buff. I don't particularly value those things very high. I think I'd rather run the Monk FF7 subjob and just bring another unit to the group that can AoE buff evasion and do that for the evasion buff instead of relying on um, Utsusemi right here. Now, her Paladin subjob, which is typically a very, very good subjob in my opinion, brings a few interesting things. One, it brings access to slashing type damage that scales off of more things than just attack. So these could be pretty hard hitting abilities if you, if you get unlucky and run into somebody who's stacking strike resistance. Now, it brings Sentinel, which is a very, very good ability for manual PVP. When you're closing the gap in manual PVP, Sentinel is absolutely broken. It brings access to a tracked blade if you wanted to run some like crazy, uh, evasion tank tifa thing so that's cool the big highlight here for me though is saintly wall the um 50 damage cut three times physical barrier that's the big ticket item from the paladin sub job in my opinion and if people are running paladin sub that'll probably be it they'll be running tifa as some like anti-physical bruiser with saintly wall on and just saying hey look she's going to dodge and if she's not dodging she's going to take 50 percent reduced damage that could be more valuable than the courage buff so keep that in mind then her limit break, which I'll scroll down a little bit so we can see that made with love by Bismarck at the bottom thing. Um, her limit break is very, very good. Like, I really, really like this limit break. It has a nice range to it of four, which isn't super long, but it's nice. It costs 43 AP, does 200% damage, scales off 120% attack, and has a 45% chance to inflict stun for two turns. Now, if you're hitting a unit that does not have stun resist, this will probably stun them. Limit breaks have a very high chance of stunning. And this is a two turn stun. Like, like let me put my face back on the screen here. This is two turns of crowd controlling the enemy target right here. Stun is already a really good um, status effect to inflict because it essentially makes that person miss their next turn. This is double that. This is two turns of you are crowd controlled. You will do absolutely nothing. And it's not a, it's not a status effect that gets removed by that unit taking damage. So if you have an enemy like King Mott running forward and you drop this limit break on them, that King Mott will now stand there and die for his next two turns instead of like AOE berserking your team or something like that. Really like this limit break. And I think it's one you should invest in so the AI will consider using it. And there you go. That's Tifa in a nutshell, you guys. I actually think that she's going to be almost on par with 2B, if not as good, but slightly different. I think they will pair really well together. I will probably make a video just talking about building evasion teams with Tifa. Um, you know, just because it's fun. And we're trying to hype up Final Fantasy VII as much as we can because we've been waiting. We've been waiting on this for months and it feels really cool that we're finally getting to cash it in. So, hey guys, if you like this video, please click that thumbs up button. It helps push this video to other people in the audience. Click subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.